Hello everyone, welcome back to the Data Tech channel. I hope you are doing well. In this video, we will walk through step-by-step -step process of triggering a Lambda function based on an event. Let's start by creating a function using Python 3.8. Let's click on create function, give it a name. Let's name it Lambda, sorry, Lambda event. My bad. Select the runtime. So we're going to select Python 3.8. We will keep the default architecture. And after that, for the permissions, we're going to use an existing role. So in in this demo, we're going to use um, S3 event to trigger this Lambda function. So the Lambda need to have a proper permissions on S3 buckets so it can um, uh, it can trigger when the event happen. So I already have a role named Lambda S3. I'm going to show you what exact, what, what policies are actually attached in this role. Let me click here. So I have uh, three policies here, AWS Lambda Execute, AWS S3 Full Access, and AWS S3 Read Only. So you can create a role with all these three policies or either of these, like Lambda Execute we need, but either of uh, S3 Full Access or Read Only can work. After that, click on Create Function, and this will create a, like a skeleton of for our function where uh, you can see we have uh, no trigger, no destination, okay? And we do one thing now let's create a trigger so in in our use case lambda function need to be triggered by an s3 event so whenever a file is uh, uploaded uh, to s3 bucket we want this lambda function to be a trigger so let's click on add trigger so for the source type s3 select the source then select the bucket so for this uh, demo, we're going to use event data tech demo. And after that, like what kind of event we want to capture uh, in this, uh, like we, what kind of event we want to capture, like there are various uh, types of events. So which one we want, if you click, like if you click on this, uh, you will find all of them. So some of them off, like for example, uh, like our object creation, which we're going to do the, in this demo, like when we uploading a file to S3, that is uh, pretty much like creating a new object. And but it, we have other events uh, to, types too. For example, deleting an object, and there are various uh, others. Like if we are restoring something from other, uh, like from the glass, uh, glacier storage or from other storage class or something like that. For our use case. Uh, create events work fine and after that we can add a prefix that's basically a subfolder a suffix like if we are looking for any specific type of file that could be a csv parquet or even jpg after that we acknowledge it where we just say that we're not going to use the same input and output file uh, for our lambda function otherwise like lambda function can go into a like infinite loop and that could be a very costly um, that could be very cost uh, effective like it, it won't be like it, it could be a cost it could be a very uh, cost heavy okay so that's a that's not recommended and it's not a best practice either click on add okay so once here let me do this and once the trigger is created we can see on our screen uh, with the function we have an s3 connected to it now now we have created our trigger now let's take a look at the lambda function code so if we click on code so you will find some of the code already here so I have already written this code and I'm going to provide a link to the github in the video description for this code and uh, it's not very complicated it's look overwhelming but uh, we're going to look into this uh, uh, step by step 
okay so now the code is here which I copied from my github I'm going to as I said I'm going to share this let's go here and with before deploying let's try to understand let's try to decode it so we begin we begin by importing the Boto 3 library which allow us to interact with various AWS service using AWS SDK for Python and the next is the lambda handler function with two parameters event and context which we already aware about it event uh, as we know provides the information about the trigger uh, like about, about the trigger uh, the triggering event basically so in this case which is the s3 so whenever there is a file uploaded all the information will come from this uh, event which is uh, a JSON uh, kind of stru JSON structure JSON file now let's take a look into uh, uh, like what will be available in the like a s3 event so let me do one thing like click on test I'll click on configure it's just to show you so last time we just took a like a template of hello world but if you go here and search for s3 even if you type s3 let's select this s3 put and if you look here that's how s3 event look like so it basically have a record and like all these um, i'll say all these key values like i already uh, i already have a like a description about all of them like what it means all of majority of them and I'm going to share this link too so you can look into that but for this demo we are most interested in oh, like in records like record is basically it's an array of all these events information and if you look at this uh, piece like this is like providing event related information reason time all those kind of things but if it's an S3, so we need the bucket and the object information and which is coming from, if you look here, like it's coming from key S3 and in the key S3, we also have uh, like another key bucket and there it provides the bucket name here. It's an example. If you want to test it out, you can replace it with the your bucket name and same thing we have a, like in S3, we have an object and for the object, we have a key, which is basically your object uh, key and if you want to test it out we can replace this with our key name like our object key name and this information by our bucket name and if you look at this this is basically a nested structure of a JSON file where it started as an array then we have like multiple I'll say dictionary nested dictionaries in it so uh, that's we going to look into the code like how we can access or fetch the bucket name and the key name which is very um, I'll say like a very minimal things we need when we are uh, creating an event for s3 okay let me cancel this and come here so in in our code if you look in our code and this is what I was talking about like the first thing what we are doing we are fetching the bucket name and the object name and if you look at this now you're probably able to understand like why we have so many uh, like a bracket after bracket so basically it says in events go to the records array go to the zero uh, like to the first record in the array and there like look for the s3 in s3 look for the bucket and in the bucket look for the name so because of that nested structure using this we should be able to get the bucket name then same goes for the object key and after that i'm just printing the bucket name and the object key and after that we are creating a s3 client using the uh, boto3 library so if you look at this it's basically we are creating a client like we name it s3 underscore client boto3 so we are creating a client and the client is used basically to retrieve the uh, the uploaded file information so how we do that we basically using get object where we passing the bucket name and the key which we got already 
and uh, getting whatever is in the file, like we, we, we fetching the file information and storing in a variable name response. And from response, we, uh, we, we trying to read the content of it, of whatever file it is. And after that, we are printing those content and, and just like for this function, we are returning a dictionary where we say status code is 200 and file and a simple message where it's a file uploaded and process successfully. And uh, it's, as I say, like it's a simple version of uh, a trigger, but we can perform, uh, like if you look at this, like we can, um, like in this example, we try to keep things simple, but we can, uh, we can perform additional uh, things in it like if uh, like if you want to process some data we can add that or for example once we get the file contents we can uh, like extract specific informations or or we can transform it and, and even we can store it back to a like a, a database or any destination that could be in another bucket too so now we have now we understand our code let's deploy this click on deploy awesome and I just like I, I am not going to test it because it's a very simple code let's uh, give it a shot by uploading a file to to the bucket so if you look at this the bucket is empty we click on upload uh, click on add files and we're going to upload this uh, hello world.txt it is a very basic file which have uh, like some text information in it uh, very simple like what is uh, we, we're going to see that so let's click on open upload that it's a small file it uploaded very fast now now let's go to the cloud watch so there are two ways to go to the cloud watch we can go from conf like we can click on monitor and click on this view cloud watch logs or we can directly land into cloud watch and navigate there so if you land here like if you see uh, let this page load it's still loading uh, you will find oh, so this is the last log uh, and this is related to our a, like to our uh, to our lambda function from where we came so let's look into the log click here and if you look at this so uh, it is completed successfully so when we uploaded the file here like this file after that it uploaded uh, like it triggered the lambda function and in our code if we go back one more time just to make everything uh, align like what we did we first print the bucket name and the object key and that we can see here our bucket name was event data tech demo and the for and the object is hello world.txt that we can see here the bucket name is this this is that and after that let me sorry my bad it's basically printing the content of hello world.txt which is I mentioned like this is a bunch of uh, uh, like a text there which is like what is primary key foreign key all those information and yeah so that